you think it's time to transition your baby from the bassinet in your room to a crib in their own room. If you're wondering how you should do this and exactly when you should do this, stay tuned for this video. talk about three main factors in making the transition from the nursery to the crib. So the first one being where are you going to have your baby sleep? The second one is going to be when should you make this transition? And then the third thing we're going to talk about is how to make this transition. Hey guys, my name is Missy Yando. I'm the owner of Slumber and Bloom. I'm a certified pediatric sleep consultant with over 15 years of experience helping hundreds and hundreds of families. Now I'm here to help your baby bloom. Number one is the when. When should you be moving your baby to their nursery? So the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that you have your baby in your room for the first six months to reduce the risk of SIDS. Now, however, that is completely, it is their recommendation. If you choose to follow it, that is your parental decision. If you feel like your baby is sleeping through the night sooner and you feel comfortable and safe and you have your video or audio monitor or whatever you might have to be able to keep an ear or an eye on them, it is totally up to you. The next thing we need to talk about is where is your baby going to be sleeping? So hopefully it is obvious that your baby is going to be sleeping in a crib in their own room. Now we need to make sure that you are following the ABCs of sleep. If you are unaware of the ABCs of sleep, check out this video over here after you watch this video. But basically the ABCs of sleep means that your baby is sleeping alone, on their back, and in the crib. Other things you need to make sure that your baby has is blackout curtains and white noise. These are two must-haves that no clients of mine ever sleep train without having these things. So make sure that you are setting up the most optimal sleep environment for your baby by having it pitch black and having white noise. Now we're gonna talk about how to make this transition. You know, the meat and potatoes, it's what you came here for. I'm going to give you four steps to making the transition to your baby's crib. Number one, you have to have some playtime in the baby's bedroom. So whether or not the baby is playing in their crib and just has some toys scattered around and they're playing, or if they are playing just on the floor in their room, but they need to be familiar with this space. It needs to be a space that your child feels comfortable and happy in and is not just thrown into a crib in a new place in a new environment and not knowing where they are essentially. We have to remember that maybe you spent months putting this nursery together for your baby, but a, they don't care about the decor. B, your child only needs to feel safe and secure. So make sure that they are accustomed to this new nursery space and getting used to where they're going to be sleeping. Tip number two is to do the entire bedtime routine in your baby's nursery. So you're not just feeding your baby, changing them, putting them in their pajamas in a different room of the house and then just plopping them in the crib. You need to go to your child's bedroom, have that last feeding of the day at the very beginning of your bedtime routine and then do the other aspects of your child's bedtime routine and then you can put your child in the crib so that they can fall asleep in their crib. We'll talk about that point in a minute. But step number three is to cuddle with your baby while it is dark in your child's room. So you want to do your entire bedtime routine and then you want to turn off the lights turn on the white noise and just be still with your baby those couple minutes even if it's only one to three minutes of just holding your baby it just makes your child feel so much more comfortable that safety and security that we talked about and just helping them feel like you are encouraging your child to fall asleep in this very safe comfortable cozy space I promise you it'll go so much smoother so then we're gonna get to step number four. Always, 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 always have your child fall asleep independently in the crib. Yes, this is where sleep training comes in. So whatever sleep training method feels good for you that you can stay 100% consistent with, you need to stick with it and make sure your child is always falling asleep independently in the crib. The reason for doing this is because when your child falls asleep in the crib or any location really, when they wake through the night going through their sleep cycles as we all do, we just don't remember, your child will remember falling asleep in that space so they will be able to fall back asleep in that space 
when they're transitioning through their sleep cycles. Now on the flip side of that, if your child is falling asleep in your arms and then being placed into this crib that they don't normally sleep in, when they wake up and transition through their sleep cycles, they're gonna be shocked. They're gonna be like, ah, I thought I was in my mom's arms. Why am I in this crib? And then they're just gonna be confused as to why they're all alone when they fell asleep not alone. So of course you need to make sure that your child is falling asleep in their crib. Now a bonus tip for you is that you want to start this transition at bedtime. So make sure that your child has had really great naps all day long, that they're in a good mood and that they're not overtired. Baby's sleep pressure is the most at night. That is when they're getting the most production of melatonin. That is when they have the highest drive to sleep. So if you start this transition at bedtime, then the likelihood that they're going to succeed faster at learning this new sleeping space is going to skyrocket. So after night one in the crib, if it went really well, then you can jump straight into doing naps. If it didn't go well in the crib the first night, then I will give you a little grace period of one to three days of naps, however they were previously before transitioning to the crib, but no more than that, okay? Promise me, promise me in the comments down below that you will stay consistent. It's literally like my keyword to life. If I had one of those word counts that says like, how many times you say every single word in your dictionary, I guarantee you consistency is the number one word that I say. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Click the link in the description box down below to get my free baby sleep guide. This guide is, I mean, if I say so myself, it's gold. There is so much great information in here that's going to get you guys started laying the foundation to healthy sleep habits. So make sure you grab that sleep guide. Check out this playlist over here for more baby sleep tips. Click this button over here to subscribe to this channel and keep blooming. Mwah.